welcome to the HR Happy Hour. I'm Trish McFarland, your host, and I'm here joined with my co-host, George Larac. Hello, Trish. Hello, we're Hello, here everyone. At, at the HR Technology Conference Again. doing this live. Again, yes. right? This is like a yearly thing, so. Um, but this is fun. We haven't done, we've both done podcasting on the HR Happy Hour Network, yes. but very rarely on video, so it's nice to see you in person. And it's and nice to, to see you in person. Right? It's, ni yeah. it's nice to be here again, and all the podcast listeners get to see what I look like. Oh, that's that's true. They may, uh, they have a picture. That's that's well, all, yeah, right? So yeah, yeah they Someone see the live action. Someone tracked me down yesterday. Did they really? To tell me it was the it's the person that listens to my podcast. Oh, you yeah. have a lot of people that listen to your podcast. Uh, I'll share the numbers with you. It's, all right. They're big. You're cool. popular. You're very cool. big in podcasting. So. All right, that's good to hear. <laughs> Anyway, well, we are we're joined here today um, with Carrie Bradfield from the Infor Workforce Management Team. She's our Workforce Management Product Leader. And uh, Carrie, welcome to the show. Thank you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, beyond sort of the, the brief intro I gave. Just tell us a little bit about what you do um, on a day-to-day -day basis and what you find most interesting about uh, you know, working with workforce management. Sure, workforce management is something I have loved ever since I got into it. In my career, I started with Deloitte kind of as a general HR person, and then I found workforce management, like this is where I need to be. So I, I've been working in workforce management for more than 15 years. It's something that I, I adore, and I, I have a particular passion for scheduling, um, though of course I, you know, I know um, kind of the end-to-end -end processes from it. And, and I've been working in the product management team at Infor for about, three, oh, I think four years now. Um, and I'm leading that team and building out things for the future, uh, things that our customers want, things that we think the market needs. That's great. Now, I find it interesting. I'm, I'm very similar in terms of being passionate about HR. So whenever I would say that, people would sort of like raise the one eyebrow like, how, how does that happen? <laughs> so, I mean, can you give us some insight? Like, I know you say you started at Deloitte and then yeah. you, find, you found it. Like, was there one, one person or one project that really sort of like really clicked for you? Like, this is what I want to do with my life. Because I will tell you, working with Carrie, she is truly She's not lying, she's passionate about workforce management, which is really cool. Well, she's in so, good company here. You yeah. know, I think it was when I was introduced to a customer that was a retailer, and I'm like, I totally get retail, you know, I know how to go shopping, and I've also been that person who stood in the line, and was like, what is going on here? Why isn't there anyone working the register? And when I realized that you could actually solve these problems through a system, I'm like, what, what is this? This is so cool, and so I really dived into that, and that's, that's where I kind of started, and it really getting into workforce management, and then it's kind of expanded to other industries. I've learned so much about different areas that I had no idea I would ever get into. Well, scheduling is tied to so many aspects of HR. Yeah. Uh, comp, overtime, taxes, uh, you know, coverage in the business. Yeah, penalties now in yeah. a lot of places. Right. Uh, yeah. Whether you're eligible for benefits or not. Mm -hmm. but, but it's complicated. It's one of the more complicated. I think people underestimate how complex scheduling really is. That's true. So, Absolutely true. You know, have you seen anything here around workforce management and scheduling that, that's interesting? Yeah, you know, I have. I, I, I spent some time over in the startup pavilion, which I thought was a really interesting place to see where people are starting to think about things, um, looking at a few of the other you know, newer businesses, getting employees engaged seems to be the key here. We have a millennial workforce that they don't want to be on anything but their phones. So we want to be able to, to serve them and to, to provide them all of those things that they need. And I think that's really a key, you know, takeaway here, seeing a lot of the stuff that's, that's going on with mobile devices, employee engagement, um, you know, a lot of interesting things there. But you, you, it's interesting, I, I can tell your, your take on scheduling is so HR focused compared to mine, <laughs> because all of the things you mentioned okay. were very HR types right. of things, but right. I think of it as an operational thing. Operations is such a big thing in scheduling that I need to be able to help people sell more things. I need to be able to, to um, give patients really good care in hospitals. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a neat package because it hits both of those things. Sure. Yeah, if you can align uh, the right people on a shift in a retail environment, mm -hmm. if you have data that might speak to who performs better oh, totally. during the morning or the afternoon or the evening. And in caregiving, that's that's really interesting. Who's, what 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 types of personalities do we have? Mm -hmm. What you know, who gives better care? To, you know, who feels better during what shifts? If we're surveying, do you, do oh, you yeah. see a lot of 
a lot of systems that can provide that sort of insight? Yeah, you know, that's what that's a great thing around healthcare um, because people need to be hired into the right units inside a hospital to be able to really perform their best. Uh, something our talent science team has been working a lot on and, and they do a lot of work there. And then on the scheduling side of things, you really also need to be in that day-to-day -day thing. You can have 10 different patients all with the same diagnosis, but maybe they require different amounts of care across each of them and you have to be able to make sure they get the right amount of nursing care and the right number of people there to take care of them. Yeah, I love that she brought up employee experience and engagement because right. when you're, you know, it sounds not connected or disconnected yeah. from scheduling, but oh, really no. that's where the employee is. That's, that's where, you know, they right. go into tech to right. get, or HR tech, to get their pay, to, you know, swap yeah. a shift, swap, and, you, and yeah. they're there. And while they're there, you can make that experience a good one or a, or a difficult one. Right. And that drives some engagement, not just in the app, but yeah. it's how they feel about their work. Totally, I, I mean, I see complaints on the internet because I love just reading what people are talking, when they talk about their scheduling tools, what their complaints are. It's like, I put in my time off request and they still scheduled me. It's like, I hear it all the time. See it all over right. like, you know, message boards from different retailers, different um, industries out there, people complaining about that. Yeah. All we need to do is listen to them and pay attention and, and you're getting that better engagement, they feel better about their work immediately. Um, shift swapping is a big topic, it's something that's near and dear to me. You want to be able to have that weekend off without um, actually putting in for a day off because maybe you don't want to really take time off. Um, so, you know, be able to swap with your friend, all of that, those sorts of things are, are things yeah. that are really important. A weekend off sounds really good to me. Oh, good for right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right now for this event. Great event, but my goodness, we're, we're really worn out, I think, at this point. No, I think that's why when I when I met Carrie, it's like you can tell, you can feel that she knows the, the connection between yeah. HR and operations, and I do think that's unique. I think yeah. that a lot of people see it one way or the other, yeah. and that's, that's actually coming up um, from an HR perspective. Many organizations where they're trying to figure out where different parts of HR reside. Is it in operations? Is it in HR? Are certain things in finance, right? So when you have those discussions and you bring in something like workforce management, that's all, always the one. Yeah. People fight for that, right? Totally. People fight to have ownership over hmm. workforce management, at yeah. least in the organizations I've been part of. So, we see it all the time, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's a balance there. You've got to get both teams on board and everybody has to be you know, ready to commit to what they're doing. Right. I do view it as the bridge. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously working with, with our HCM uh, system as well as workforce management, mm -hmm. payroll, you name all the, the components and it all needs to fit together nicely. So yeah, that's sort of that bridge. Yeah, workforce planning too absolutely, can really come absolutely. into that because you want to be able to use that data that you have from your operations to figure out how many people you need to hire. It all right. comes it together. All fits together. Yeah. So, there, okay. There's this operations, um, it, whether it's as a part of HR, you know, HR operations or in mm -hmm. some medium-sized businesses, smaller businesses, HR becomes people operations right. and bringing that together. Do you, do you see that in the in your customer base? You know, I think we do in some of the, the types of, of businesses that we look at. Um, you see some of that, but a lot of times when we're talking about operations, it's actually the operations side of the business, not necessarily HR operations yeah. where, you know, we're really talking about how do we run the hospital? How do we run a prison? You know, it can be any, you know, t type of, of industry there. It's really about, you know, what do we need to accomplish in our business? And then HR is obviously part of that, we're going to use that to support the operations. Yeah. Well, just to, to wrap up, I've got one, one other question. I mean, we've, we've heard industry kind of popping into the conversation yeah. a little bit. Can you talk about what do you see um, from a workforce management perspective that's different about maybe a hospital versus a mm -hmm. prison or a retailer? I mean, what, what do you see as some of the, the main reasons that it, it would be important to look at different industries differently? Sure, you know, industry scheduling is, is a very important thing because obviously you can't schedule a prison the same way you schedule a, you know, retail store in a mall. You know, you're, you're gonna have different needs there and you're gonna have a lot of different factors that come into play. So on the retail side of things and hospitality, um, you're gonna have information about the people that are coming into your place of business. You're going to know who's walking in the door, maybe through a traffic counter, or you're going to know um, your, your history of transactions, how many things you've sold, and you're going to want to use that to drive your schedules in the future. That's a really big part of, of like a retail, a hospitality type of industry. Um, figuring out how many people are going to be there and getting the right people, especially your talented people, when the, when the, the uh, folks are going to come in. Now, if you, if you start to work in, in some different worlds, you're going to have a lot of different challenges, and you really want a scheduling tool 
people that can meet those challenges. Um, in uh, hospitals, obviously the patient care is going to be a big thing, so you want to be able to look at that and understand how do you need to staff in order to have appropriate patient care. There's a lot of ratios in different places around how you need to staff your um, RNs to patient ratios. Um, you want to be able to, to understand how the hospital works. And I, I love to say that nurses are so demanding because they absolutely <laughs> are. And charge nurses are frequently the ones that are in charge of scheduling. They're not there to be an HR practitioner. They're there to be a nurse. Right. And they need to have an easy to use solution that solves their problem. Their problem is I need to get the right number of people on my schedule. Right. And then you kind of move into some other areas. We get like a prison or something like that. You get an entirely different set of complications. And uh, typically they come from being in the public sector type of things where you're going to have heavily, heavily unionized environments. You're going to have really complicated scheduling rules that grew out of, you know, a paper process somebody had, you know, 40 years ago. And, you know, you have this you know, way of looking at things as like, oh, well, we can't have this type of shift after that type of shift because we have this line in the collective bargaining agreement. And uh, you have to be able to, to take all of this, consume it, and figure out how to solve those problems. And you really need to be able to have a solution that can, can hit those industries and be those, you know, be that like extra bit of functionality rather than just, let me t use Excel. Everyone right. loves Excel. Right. I, anyone so can build a schedule in Excel, but can it do compliance? Can it check the, that collective bargaining agreement that you might not remember every line of? Right. Great yeah. example. Well, George, I mean, I could talk to her all yeah, day, we right? Could just, like we she, could just talk to her. We, we need to do a longer show with her, actually, <laughs> later. But thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you for, for joining me, it's great I, to right? Be here. Thank um, you. Doing the HR Happy Hour Live, and um, we'll, we'll check in with you later. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.